Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about a very interesting concept which is very very recent and has started to pick up now. It's called large action models and if you folks have already heard about this, no this is not similar to large language models or not same as large language models but rather large action models and just like the name suggests, these are models that can essentially take actions and not just generate content which is what most large language models do right now. I also want to address how large action models are different from LLMs and I also want to address what is the difference between large action models and AI agents which is similar to what large action models will be in the future. I also want to talk about a few examples that you may already have at hand or few of the large action models that you may already be using and to what extent they are capable in order to automate your day-to-day -day work at this point of time. So let's get started. Essentially just the name suggests large action model are models that don't only think and process text but also can take actions. Now AI agents can also take actions. But how are large action models different than AI agents? So essentially how AI agents work is that AI agent has an orchestrator agent which kind of plans out an amount of things that agent needs to do in order to achieve an objective. Now it then will distribute these tasks across the board in order to you know get these done one by one. In the back end the main agent is still using a large language model in order to do all of these tasks. So how the architecture looks like is that there's an LLM on the top followed by an AI agent who is using that LLM as a brain and then there are a bunch of different agents and these bunch of different agents also have a bunch of different tools that they will run in order to execute certain tasks. So essentially it's like executing a specific piece of code in real time in order to perform an action. So let's say if you want to post a newsletter then that's what an AI agent will essentially do right. It will read the code and execute that code, take the content from the agent that generated the content, execute the code and just send the content and publish it. Talking about newsletters, the whole concept of large action models was covered in our newsletter last week. So if you're interested, please feel free to subscribe to this. They integrate existing LLMs, fine tuning them for specific applications, multimodal so it, they can accept text images and so on. They have certain goals. They have a user interface. There is a task decomposition and planning, which is similar to what AI agents do. But AI agents, you will have to build like a bunch of different agents and these agents will not automatically create themselves. You will have to define these agents. So a large action model essentially will go ahead and build its own set of agents for diverse set of tasks. So it's more like a generic agent that can do agent generation or task goal and delivery or output generation in real time. And then it has action execution and continuous learning. One of the good examples of uh, something like this would be very recent announcement by Microsoft, which is M Agentic or Magnetic Agent 1, which essentially does a similar set of things, right? So there's the main orchestrator who kind of coordinates all of these tasks. Then there is the file server who will essentially look for, look for files on your computer. And there is a web server that will look at the web for certain piece of pieces of text. Then there are Python and C++ code writers. So to give you an example, if you want to, let's order a sandwich then what the orchestrator is going to do is that it's going to start the web surfer agent the web surfer agent will essentially go to the website where it can order the sandwich then the orchestrator will tell the coder to write the code in order to press a specific button programmatically and then all of that will be documented and logged in a computer terminal which will also be used in order to send certain commands so let's say if i want to access a certain file directory in my computer then i can send that command to the computer terminal to get me to that path this i think is an example of an upcoming large action model while they have not specifically mentioned that this is a large action model the fact that it can think and take actions is kind of hints at the fact that it's going in that direction even OpenAI right now is working on something like this so what are the applications of large action models first they power AI assistants now here's an example right so if you use Google assistant in any capacity you can tell it to schedule a meeting at 4 you can tell it to remind you about let's say something at 5 p.m and so on and so forth now that action model can not only talk to you but also do tasks so that's a very good example of a large action model you can use it for customer service marketing and sales given that it can take actions so let's say if someone writes back hey i'm available for a meeting at 4 pm this agent can automatically schedule a meeting for you there are chatbots and then there are process automations ui testing and so on and so forth so a bunch of different things that can be done by a large action models once they become mainstream now what is the comparison between large action models and llms at this point of time you've already kind of gotten an understanding of how the 
these are different but the core functionality is to understand and generate for llms while lams have to take actions in order to do certain things from the data modality standpoint llms are good at textual data they can also do multi-modal processing sure but lams can handle multiple types of data including images and even write code and execute code the goal of LLM is to just generate text outputs without environmental interaction while LAMs execute actions by interacting with systems. Learning capacity wise limited feedback incorporation while LAMs can use feedbacks for com continuous improvement by having like a reinforcement learning sort of a flow. Common applications include chatbot and content creation for LLMs while LAMs have robotic process automation, advanced assistance and so on and so forth. Some of the examples of an LAMs in action would be Rabbit R1. Now I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a very good example because the whole concept kind of fell flat on the face but regardless that is the direction that most LAMs will probably head at and a better example here would be the Google Assistant example because that essentially not only thinks but also takes actions in order to schedule meetings and stuff for you. There are other examples like Cog Agent that is an open source model that generates plans for GUI operations and performs visual question answering. There is Gorilla which is open source model that enables large language models to utilize numerous APIs effectively through natural language queries. So these are some of the examples and this is on a very very high level what LA LAMs are and I would recommend you keep an eye out for Magnetic One because I I think this is one of the papers that is closest to the concept of large action models. Regardless, think of on a very, very simple terms, a bunch of the, if you've heard of crew AI, which is essentially a team of agents, you put that entire team together and what you build is a large action model, right? So that is essentially what it is. Even if we don't have it, or we don't call it large action models, we still have it available and we use it frequently. Even if you don't know how to write code, you in some capacity or the other, you are using large action models today. So broadly that is about it uh, i hope this adds value and if you guys have any questions with respect to this you guys can let me know definitely this is the future because a lot of companies including open ai are now heading towards an agentic system and a lot of people are saying that ai agents are going to be the thing of the future and the fact that you guys are following the channel or following these courses essentially enables you to stay up to date with the latest things not just stay up to date to be honest you're actually executing things as you go so really excited to be around at this point of time and thank Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.